What's going on, not just developers? I'm super excited for today's build. Welcome here, welcome to a new live stream. And today we start a brand new tutorial, a brand new build, which has been requested so many times on this channel. And I'm speaking about a video calling application, uh, similar to what? Similar to Zoom, similar to Discord, WhatsApp, uh, Skype, Viber, and any other application that has um, an audio or video calling application. We're gonna do it today, guys. So, um, what exactly we're gonna build today? We're gonna build, uh, we're gonna start with a list, a list of contacts that you will have in your application. Then we're gonna go into the screens for uh, calling someone and the screen here on the right is whenever you receive a call from some, someone, an incoming call. And lastly, but uh, very important is the call screen, which is gonna have all the UI elements, which will have the video stream of the person who is calling, the caller and the callee and so on. So super excited about this build. Uh, let me know down in the comments, what do you think about this and if you waited for it. Um, a little bit on the timeline. So today we're gonna build only the UI for this project. And uh, in next week, next Friday, at the same time, uh, which is 12th November at 3 p.m. GMT, we are going to take this UI that we're gonna build today and implement the video calling functionality to make this application um, fully functional with the, both the front end and the back end. This video is uh, brought to you by Vox Implant. Uh, Vox Implant, we're gonna speak more about that uh, in the next video, but shortly about them, uh, Vox, Implant, Vox Implant provides a serverless communication platform and they provide API and SDKs for video, audio um, uh, communication, for SMS, chat, and a lot of tools that uh, improve the communication uh, for your application such as uh, language processing, for example. Um, yeah, what can be done with Vox Implant? Basically everything when it comes to communication, being it in forms of text, video or audio. So starting from virtual call centers, you can build this in cloud and allow uh, your support team to communicate directly with people from your application. Uh, you can build audio and video conferencing applications such as uh, Clubhouse, uh, which is for audio, Zoom, Google Meets, or even Teams. And also you can build peer-to-peer -peer audio and video calling applications like WhatsApp, Messenger, FaceTime, Skype, Viber, any other application. And this is, this is the scenario that we are gonna use uh, for our application to build this peer-to-peer -peer audio and video calling functions. You can also build a live streaming application like Twitch or YouTube and a lot of <laughs> more application using the Vox Implant cloud, um, cloud solution. They have APIs and SDKs for a lot of uh, languages and frameworks. Uh, they have it for web, for Android, iOS, React Native, Flutter, and even Unity SDK. So you are covered. We're gonna use the React Native SDK. So thank you very much Vox Implant for sponsoring this video. We're gonna get into the details about how to use it, how to implement and uh, how to work with the documentation uh, for Vox Implant in order to implement this peer-to-peer -peer communication in the next video next week. But back to our tutorial today, uh, what do you need in order to uh, be able to follow along? You will need the asset bundle at ss.nojazz.dev slash video call. Um, and also you'll need the React Native environment setup. Uh, if you didn't, don't have it already set up on your machine, check out this video. Uh, I explain there step-by-step how to set up React Native for Windows. So without further ado, let's get started and jump into building our application. Hello everyone, how are you doing guys? I see a lot of people today, that's super nice. <laughs> Your accent is super cute, thank you very much. Okay.
Can I add this with signal clone? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the feature that we're gonna build today, you can uh, integrate in the applications that you already build, being it the signal clone or the WhatsApp clone or the Instagram clone, any clones that you already built from, uh, from this channel. You can integrate with uh, the video and audio calling functionality that we're gonna learn today and in the next video. All right, so um, let's get started. I'm gonna initialize the project and while we're waiting, uh, we're gonna cover some questions from the live chat. So uh, here we have our first slide. Um, yeah. Let's start by initializing the React Native project on our machine using the npx react native init command. So for that, I'm gonna open a terminal somewhere here. Come on. I want to make it a little bit bigger so everyone can see like this and let's do projects and here let's do npx uh, react native in init and video call I don't know give it a name I'm gonna name it video call Okay, React Native started uh, downloading the template and initializing all the JavaScript dependencies that it needs. So let's wait a couple of minutes and then we can get started. Will you be using a library? Yes, we're gonna use uh, Vox Implant SDK uh, that will help us implement the video and audio calling functionality. with Twilio video. No, uh, not we're not gonna use Twilio in this uh, project. We're gonna use Vox Implant, which is an alternative of Twilio. React Native CLI. Someone asked if we're gonna use React Native CLI or Expo, and for this project, we're gonna use React Native CLI. Mac OS, again, w Windows suffers. I'm using Windows in that day-to-day -day job um, or if I'm recording videos, uh, pre I'm doing pre-recorded videos. Uh, but when I'm doing live stream, I'm trying to separate uh, the workflow to two machines and my Windows machine is now responsible only for the live streaming part and uh, on the Mac OS system, on the MacBook Pro, I'm doing the coding. So if, I don't know, for some reason, MacBook Pro decides to stop working on crashes, I still have a stream going on and I don't know, I can run everything on Windows or, yeah, it's just to separate everything there. Because I was doing everything on the Mac OS, the live streaming and coding, and it started from time to time, it was, overloading the, the machine and it started lagging and I got into the solutions of how to, to improve that. So that's why. I don't know if <laughs> it was interesting for anyone, but here is the explanation. Uh, Sachin, hi from Batch Zero. Hello, how are you doing? Let me do some changes here. I'm still waiting for, uh, for React Native to initialize the project. So, okay. Um, could you build WhatsApp uh, without TypeScript with React Native? Mm, I don't. I don't remember if we use TypeScript for our WhatsApp clone. Um, Question to you, did you see the WhatsApp clone on the channel? Did you follow it? Because we did it. Uh, 
Will you add screen sharing and recordings? Uh, I didn't plan for that yet. Um, I intended, I planned everything to be focused on one-on-one -on -one calling, like peer-to-peer -peer calling. And that's gonna be the focus of the live stream, of the next live stream. Today we're gonna do the UI. Uh, but if you are interested in screen sharing and recording, we, we might do something about it. Actually, hello, how are you doing? Okay, someone is suggesting me something related to the full screen. That my audio becomes slow. Mm, why is that happening? Uh, yeah, I was having some troubles with the live streaming software. I don't know why, but is it still happening that when I change scenes, the volume changes? I don't know. You use TypeScript for all uh, your applications. No, that's not true. I use both JavaScript and TypeScript. Uh, however, I would recommend you to uh, learn TypeScript and start using it in all your applications. Uh, especially if your application is getting a little bit bigger, it's gonna save you a lot of time in future, so. All right. Yeah, still changes. Ah, oh, come on, I don't see it from my software. Mm, I'm gonna I'm gonna check it afterwards because I, I also saw it that it changes. So, but back in our code, everything has uh, been installed. Uh, so let's open our project. Let's first of all uh, CD into the project and I called it video call. And let's open it with our Visual Studio code. I'll write code dot to open this directory. If you don't have this alias, you can open Visual Studio Code and from there um, navigate and open your project. So let me adjust a bit the sizes, something like this. And let's open the terminal. I'm gonna go here on the top, press terminal, new terminal, or you can do a command and the tick under the escape button. Okay, so here, let's start the uh, development server for React Native, and here uh, React Native will run, and then we can open a new terminal by pressing on the plus sign, and let's run our application on a device. In my case, uh, I'm gonna run it on iOS, because the iOS simulator works a bit, little bit faster on my system, but uh, this can work, uh, this will work both with iOS and Android. So if you have an Android emulator, if you're developing on Windows or Linux, you can do npm run Android uh, to run it on your Android emulator. All right, something like this. And now let's wait until the application is building. Who wants TypeScript tutorials? No, like uh, I see that there are people who are saying that we don't understand TypeScript and so on. Uh, if you are just getting started with React Native or React JS, uh, I would recommend you to stick with JavaScript and don't overcomplicate your journey of learning uh, React Native or React JS 
by starting with TypeScript. Uh, because you will have to learn both, like two technologies at the same time, React Native and TypeScript. So keep it simple, start with JavaScript. This way you will see some progress in your uh, journey. And after you get comfortable with uh, React Native or React JS, if you're learning React JS, uh, then, uh, and also once you start working with bigger projects, with uh, bigger code base, then I highly, highly encourage you to get into TypeScript. But once your React Native fundamentals are uh, well, like you, you, you learn them well. So after that, get into TypeScript because it will improve your code, qu code quality uh, by a lot. It will save you a lot of time in future uh, by catching the bugs early on in the development without having the unexpected bugs of uh, working with different variable types and so on. So it's, it's a very, very nice tool to have it under your belt. Why it takes so long to build this application? Come on. Yeah, like what Christian is saying in the comments um, is makes a lot of sense. So TypeScript is basically the same JavaScript. It's a super set of JavaScript. So uh, if you write JavaScript, it's going to be a valid TypeScript code. Uh, the only thing that is different in TypeScript is that you have to specify the type of all, all the variables. Uh, you have to specify the type of, for example, the return statement of a function and so on. And this way you make your application type safe. So if one function uh, expects a string, and in another place you are giving uh, a number or an object, it's gonna tell you right away there that you're doing something wrong. And like surprisingly enough, like it catches a lot of bugs, like uh, it helps you a lot. That's my two cents there. <laughs> we hate yes, why? Are you gonna cover calls even if the application is closed? Yeah, Vox Implant uh, supports calls whenever your application is closed. The only thing that you have to do to um, pro to, to get this functionality is to in integrate uh, push notifications. So for any new call that you receive once the application is closed, you'll get a push notification and that will trigger the application to open and to show you the call. So back to our code here, I see that the application finished to build. Uh, now it's bundling. Oh, and we have it here. All right, so um, if you see this screen, that means that you initialize the application correctly. And um, now let's have a look a little bit uh, in the code uh, that our application generated. So here I'm gonna start with app.js because this is the entry file, entry point in our application. And as you can see, if you scroll down a bit, here is our uh, application component. And let's try to, for example, um, I don't know, here we see edit app.js to change this screen. So if I, if I change some text here, I should see it right away in our application changed. So if that is done, uh, yeah, you, you are good to go. What I usually like to do is to del delete everything from the app.js to start with a clean project. So let's delete 
from application component, I'm going to delete this scroll view, everything that is inside scroll view, so that we are left with a safe area view and a status bar, and that's it. Save. Uh, let's scroll a bit to the top. Section. This component, we don't need it. Let's get rid of it. Uh, like this. Uh, application let's let's simplify everything here so let's delete that type of application because we don't need it i see people hate typescript um is dark mode yeah let's also delete this one this one and the styles and for the status bar, I'm gonna leave the probably light content. Save. Or dark to, to be visible. Yeah, dark content. We don't need anything in the styles, so I'm gonna delete everything here. We might need the styles later on, so let's leave uh, the styles here. Now, uh, from the imports, let's delete uh, this import here everything that is not used the type let's save and now we have a very very simple react native application to test if everything is working uh, i should have left the text component and let's add here text hello world and I see the text hello world there. That means that we have a very clean um, project to start from and everything will make sense from here. Uh, all right, so uh, let's have a look at the presentation there. Where do I have it? Okay, so um, we initialize the project, we run the server, we run the application on the emulator. The next step is let's try to uh, render a list of con contacts um, as we can see here. So the, each row is pretty simple, like it's just a text aligned to the left and we have a separator which is a simple line between the, between the contacts. Okay, so let's, let's start to do it. Okay. So, um, in this project, yeah, we're gonna start from something a little bit more complicated, which is a flat list, because we have to render a list of items. To render a list of items in React Native, we can use the flat list, which we will import from React Native, flat list. And uh, instead of rendering the hello world, let's render the flat list. The flat list expects, uh, expects two properties. It expects the data, which is an array of uh, data that we want to render on the screen. So this array of data, let's define it here. I don't know, const contacts equal an array of contacts, I don't know. add here some names so that we can test and see it there. So the data is going to be the, our array of contacts, contacts. Then it also expects a render item function. This function is going to be called, basically this is a component that is going to be rendered for each individual contact in our data array. So for example, uh, if we have three items here, this render item is gonna be called three times and render the component that we are gonna give here, three times for, um, for each contact that we have here. So let's define this function. It's gonna be a function like this, which will return a text. Let's start like this, contact. Con let's save 
it put in the same line automatically. So I already see three uh, lines, all of them saying contact, contact, contact. That's okay, but we are trying to actually render the name of that contact. So to receive the item that we are currently rendering, uh, we can receive it here through the properties as item. This item is gonna be one of items from this array. So let's render it here, item. I already see the, oh God, now is better. Uh, all right, so here is the three lines with our contacts. Um, let's let's give a style to the, uh, our safe area view and let's do it as page or something like this. And also it's styles. And also let's give a style to the text in order to increase a bit the font size. Styles dot uh, contact name. So back in our styles here below, should I zoom in a bit? Is that good enough? So in the styles, let's define the style for our page and also the style for our contact name. The page, for the page, I wanted to add some padding because everything is close to the border side now, but I want to give so, some spacing around. So page, no, probably we will have to put our flat list inside the view like this. So let's import the view from React Native here on top. And let's take the style from the safe area view and put it to this view, save. And now it's better. We see uh, some spacing around. Even 15 is gonna be okay, right? Okay, so for the contact name, uh, I'm gonna do font size um, 18. I've, I thought that the 16 is by default, but I see here that it's a little bit smaller by default. So let's put it as 16. Let's add some uh, margin vertical in order to have space between the items themselves. So margin vertical five is gonna be good. And now what else do we have here? we have this line separator between items. Uh, to do that, Flatlist has a item separator component, item separator component, which is gonna be again a component that is gonna render a line. So how do we do the line? I think we're gonna do it with the help of a view. We're just gonna have a view of one pixel height, and this is gonna be this line that we that we need between the items. So style, styles.separator. Let's define the separator style. I'm gonna start with, just to see if it's there, with 10, height 10, background color, background color, let's do a light, gray, save. Yeah, I see the, this square uh, pixel there because we have width 10, height 10. So for our width, we will need 100% um, like this, good. And for the height, we will need probably one pixel. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's good. Uh, the background color probably should be even uh, a lighter shade of gray. So let me try to to do a color picker. And let's try to do a very light shade of gray here. 
copy, save, no, even later, come on, like this. Mm. <laughs> it's like almost white. Yeah, I think this is, this looks better. Uh, okay, so I think that we, I'm okay with the styles of this um, of these items. Now what I want to do is to bring in some dummy, dummy data in order to have a little bit more uh, items here in this list. So I'm gonna open our dummy data folder. Uh, okay, come on, live streams. And from data, let's grab the context.json and I'm gonna put them where? Let's uh, create a folder, new folder called assets. And inside this assets folder, let's add one more folder called da data. Now I'm gonna bring the context.json in our data folder. You can get the, the this file with the data screenshots and this PDF uh, following the URL uh, in the description below. So contacts. Contacts is a JSON um, that contains an array of objects for each individual contact. So it's a little bit different from what we have here because here we have an array of strings, but in contacts we have an array of objects. And this is quite similar to what you would uh, receive from an API um, after you request all your contacts. So that's why I define them as objects. All right, let's go back in our app.js. And instead of declaring the contacts here, I'm going to import them. So let's do import contacts from this directory assets then data, then contacts. Now let's give them there. And uh, what we see here, we see an error. Objects are not a valid as a React child. This is coming from uh, trying to render the item here. If we look what is an item in our contacts array, we see that it is an object. So we are trying to render an object when that's not possible in React Native. What we are actually trying to render is the user display name property of our item. So let's do item dot user display name save. And now we see um, the user display name. When I see more uh, lines like this, I think that we can increase the margin vertical to 10. Yes, to, to have a little bit more space there. And if the list tool is gonna be very, very long, uh, you're gonna be able to scroll for it. Yeah, I think that's, that's good. Even more? Does it ask for more? Probably 10 is, was okay. So 10. Hello Rahul, thank you very much. <laughs> Why not using TypeScript? That's a good question. <laughs> Discussed a little bit earlier. Hmm. So um, we have this flat list. We have um, the list of items. Now what I want to do is, do you want me to implement the searching capabilities? <laughs> this was a very, uh, this was a assignment for the Squid Games video that is gonna come very, very soon on the channel. And yep, one of the um, games there was to implement the search functionality. So let's, let's cover it today here. But before covering the searching functionality, 
I want to start um, moving code from our application component uh, because I like to keep the code clean and I would like to separate them into different files for each individual component. So our application should be as minimal as possible because this is the entry point. So from application, we just do all the global stuff like defining context or um, rendering the navigation and so on. But everything else, I like to keep it in a source directory. Let's create a SRC directory. And here I'm gonna create a new folder called screens that will contain all the screens of our application and another folder components, which will contain the individual components that we will need. Like technically both screens and components will be React Native components, but the screens are meant to handle the logic of each individual navigation screen. So in the screens, I'm going to define a folder for our contacts screen and let's in the context screen add the index.js and here let's do let's define the component for our contact screen so import react from react then react then let's define the contact contact screen which is going to be a functional component like this and this is gonna return something on the screen. And what is gonna return? Everything that we already defined here in the application. So let's copy the view, the flat list, the view and the flat list. Let's take it from here. And let's bring it in our contacts screen. Let's paste. And we are gonna have to import a couple of things here. We will need to import a view, a flat list and a text from React Native. Save. Uh, also the style sheet we need to import, style sheet, like this. I think in our application, yeah, all the styles uh, from app.js, they belong to the context screen. So let's bring all of them here for the page, contact name and separator. Um, what else? We need to make sure that we export this file, uh, this component. So let's go below and do export default our component contact screen. And I see here a red warning that context is not defined. Yeah, that's because we need to import the contacts data from dummy data here. But the relative path will be a little bit different. So it's one folder up, we go to screens, one folder up, we go to source, one folder up, we go to root and then assets. I think it's, it's this way. Yeah, we're gonna see if it works. Now in our app.js, I will not need these imports, only these two. And I will need import context screen from source screens context screen. And let's just render it in our application. All right, now we are back to where we started, but our application file is only 24 lines of code and once we will develop more and more feature, it's gonna be uh, kept pretty uh, clean here. So I can close our app.js. And as I said, I wanted to show you how to implement searching functionality. So let's start by, by what? Uh, here is the search bar. Okay, let's start by defining this search input box. Uh, to get the input from the user, we have text input component in React Native. So let's start by text input, render it with a placeholder because if we don't put a placeholder, um, we're not gonna see anything and we will think that it's not working. The placeholder will be search. 
and I see where the search placeholder. Perfect. Now, uh, what do we have to do to give some styles? Yeah, probably we can add some styles to, to this. So text input style styles dot search input search input let's define the styles here and i'm gonna first add a background color background color light gray uh, let's add some padding 10 uh, let's make the corners round with border radius of five. And yeah, that's probably it. I think the, mm -hmm, the light gray is too dark. So if I use this one as a background color, yeah, I think this one looks a little bit better. All right, um, so now um, let's start, as we have the styles already there, let's start to uh, implement some of the functionality. So the first thing that we have to do is we need to bind a state variable to this text input. Because in the current circumstances, if I write something here, there is no way to know in our code what is the user writing. If we want to keep track of what is the user writing and to take action based on the user input, we will need a state variable. So let's import use state from React and uh, let's define it here as the first line in our component. So const uh, use state and the default value is gonna be empty string because Initially, we're not searching anything. The use state will return us an array of two values. The first one is the value itself, so search term. And the second value is the setter, the function that will update the value in state and will trigger a re-render. Re so we usually call it set and the same name, search term. What we can do with this, we can first give to the text input the value of our search term. And secondly, we uh, the text input has a callback function, which is on text, on change text. This function will be called every time the text input changes. So, and it will give us the text of a change, the new text. So what do we have to do with whenever the, change, the text changes, we need to update it in state. So like this, save. And now if I write something, it works as it was working before, but also we, uh, I don't know, we can do console log here as search term, and we uh, have an access to this search term in our code. Let me, oh no open the debugger, so command D on Mac or control. No, it's not D. Debug with Chrome. So if I look here in our Chrome, console and if I write something here I don't see anything yeah I should have pressed on the messages and here I see the value of our text input updated perfect now uh, now 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 um, what do we have to do now um, we will also have to keep our contacts in state because they will, uh, the data that we want to render in the flat list will be dynamic. So whenever you search, 
uh, you will see less items in the, in the list. And um, that's why we, if this data is dynamic, we need to keep it in state. So whenever we will update it, it will trigger a re-render and we will see the updates directly on the screen. So let's do, let's rename this uh, from import contacts to import constant contacts uh, or import dummy contacts. Don't call them dummy. Because our state uh, is gonna be contacts or our state can be filtered contacts, set filtered contacts, use state. And initially the, the initial value, we can give a dummy data. We can give all of them here, dummy data. Oh, come on, dummy data. So instead of uh, giving context to the flat list, I'm gonna give a filtered context, save. So initially we don't see any changes because we didn't do anything. Now, uh, we need to add a dependency, add a side effect on the search term state variable. Basically, every time the search term changes, we need to update the filtered contacts. To add this kind of side effects, we have a use effect hook. The use effect, the use effect, will receive first a function, which is gonna be called, and secondly, an array of dependencies. Our dependency is the search term. So how does it work? Whenever the search term uh, updates, changes its value, this function in our use effect is gonna be called. So whenever it updates, we need to update the filtered contacts. So const uh, new, I don't know, contacts equal to to the filtered dummy contacts, dummy contacts dot filter, filter. And for each contact, how do we want to filter it? How do we want to decide if we want to leave it in the um, list or not? We need to decide it um, if the contact na name matches the search term. So we can say contact dot user display name if it's equal to search term, then we want to leave it in our new contacts. And using the new contacts, I can update the filtered contacts. New contacts like this. Save, let's see what's going on here with my application. Hey, what's going on here? Uh, let me check. Contact dot. No, I already updated it. If it's equal to the search term. Okay. So. Reload application. Reference co is not defined. What kind of co? Yeah, I think it's the, it's the old version just. All right. Let's try to to restart the server and to rerun our application. Oh, come on. NPM run iOS. I have a doubt, not related to this project, but is Redux necessary for small project? Uh, my answer is no. I don't think it's necessary for small projects. You uh, you can implement 
the global state management in for, especially for small application in much easier way um, I would recommend uh, recoil for small projects and even bigger projects it's quite easy to to learn a recoil and it's very very similar to the standard state uh, like local state that you know in react and react native or if you don't want to learn anything, you can go with a context API. You can achieve some kind of global state management with context API, but context API are not built for state management. So, downloading. Why so long? Come on, it's 100% and it stops. How can change package name of application with React Native for Android? You can manually do that through Android Manifest, uh, but because the package name is used in a lot of, in multiple places, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there is a tool to rename your project. So try, try to Google it, like uh, React Native Change Package Name or something like this, and there should be a, a tool. Come on, what's going on here? Let me try to comment out the use effect. Hmm, nothing, nothing happens. Did I do an error somewhere? It's weird. So let's do with clean cache. Okay, we are back to where we started. Let's uncomment our use effect. Save. Initially, we don't see anything there, but if I paste, for example, Vadim Savin, it will show me this um, this contact. So. Uh, as you see, it works, but this is not the best way to implement searching. So one way, one issue with this searching is that uh, if I write it with a different uh, case, for example, not capital S, but lowercase s, it's not gonna return me the item. So to fix that, we're gonna compare the lowercase uh, to lowercase, to lowercase, the lowercase version of both uh, name and the search term, so to lowercase. It's important to convert both of them to lowercase in order for it to work. And in this way, like it doesn't matter what is the case, it's gonna return it. Another improvement here is to search, to have partial matches, not complete matches. So for example, if I write only Vadim, show me all the Vadim that you have, not, you, don't ask me to write the full name there. To implement that, instead of checking with is equal, if a name is equal to the search term, we will compare them with that dot includes function and we'll say if the user display name includes the search term in, in itself, save, then uh, keep it there. So that's why if I don't have anything, it will gonna return all of them. If I do A, it's gonna return all the items with an A there. So yeah, as you can see, searching now works. Yeah, this was the challenge that, um, that people received in the Squid Games. And a lot of people uh, like had troubles with this. And that's why I decided to cover it today. 
Okay, so from this screen, I think we we are good, right? Yeah, let's move to the next screen and because yeah, we, we still have a lot of things to do today. And later on, we can improve and implement other features that you are interested in. So the next screen is the calling screen. The calling screen will, uh, first of all, display the the video camera stream as a background. Then it's gonna display on top the person that you are calling, the name, the, the number. And what's important here on the bottom is the icons as buttons, like the buttons with icons. So yeah, we're gonna have a lot of things to do here. Um, What are we starting with? Very simple and useful search uh, functionality. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so um, in order to implement the calling screen, let's start by defining a new screen in our uh, source screens folder. So let's do a new folder and it's going to be calling screen. Calling screen, let's define the index.js. And here I'm going to use the code snippets to automatically generate this uh, boilerplate. You can copy it or check out the VS Code extensions that I have published on the channel some times ago. And there I explain how to set up this, um, this plugin that will help you generate the boilerplate. So here in the text, let's just say calling. Okay. Um, now let's go back in our app.js and import calling screen from uh, from source screens calling screen and let's replace our context screen with calling and if I do so I should see calling here on the top if you see this uh, it's good let's close everything in, uh, except the calling screen and we can start implementing here the, the features. All right, so uh, what do we have there? Mm, we have, mm -hmm. we have a background image. For that, I'm not gonna implement the background image or video because this is gonna be, this is gonna come from the Vox implant SDK and we're gonna implement uh, in the next video. Today, I'm just gonna do, um, uh, I don't know, for example, a view here. A view. A view with style, let's say, um, camera preview. And the text is going to be inside this camera pre preview. Okay. Camera styles dot camera preview styles dot camera preview. The text is going to be not calling, but the name of a person. Um, so styles styles dot name. And there is one more text underneath there for the ringing and the name. So ringing plus three one, two, 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 two. styles dot num phone number, phone number. Okay, let's start with this. Let's start with this and let's uh, import the style sheet from React Native, style sheet. And let's define the styles here on the bottom. Styles equal stylesheet.create. 
And here we will have a camera preview, camera preview. We will have the name and we will have the phone number, phone number. So for the camera preview, I just want to add a background color. I don't know, give me some good background colors. Color picker. I was gonna It looks bad probably, but it's okay. Okay, so let's do flex one in order for this to disappear. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. Camera preview. Um, yeah, because this also needs a styles dot page. Page. the page why here flex one did not work mm, because the page as well should be flex one no Calling screen, where does it sit? Calling screen in the application.json calling screen, safe area view. Okay. Okay, I'm, I define height 100% for our page uh, so that the page is gonna take the whole space of our screen. And for the camera preview, now if I add 1% uh, flex one, yes, it will spawn now through all the available space. Um, okay, okay. So it will also align the items, align items center to make sure that the items are in the middle and it will have some padding, I don't know, 10. No 10, like 50 or something like this. So for the name, for the name, uh, it's gonna be font size 30, uh, font weight bold, to make it bold. And the color is gonna be white, like this, okay. And below is our phone number, which is font size, probably 25. We don't need a font weight for it. I don't like having padding 50 to our camera preview. Uh, so I'm gonna leave 10. And for the name itself, I'm gonna add some margin top to move it a little bit to the lower. So margin top 50. Yeah, something like this. It's too much. So for the phone number, the phone size 20 probably is gonna be okay. And margin bottom 10 to move them a little bit apart. Yeah, probably that's that's okay. I think even more here, margin, bottom, 15. Yeah, like this. Okay, so now we have our camera preview there. Um, what do we need? We need, the next is on the bottom here to have this um, box with all the icons that we need there, so. 
uh, it's gonna be a view, a view, and here we're gonna have all the icons, right? Mm. I'm just gonna add a text here for now, icons to see them there. And I need to remove the background color red from our page. So this view is gonna be the styles dot bottom um, or button container, button, button, buttons container, something like this, buttons, because there are multiple buttons there. So the buttons container has a background color of what's there. A very dark gray, something like this, or we can use dark gray. No. Okay, this is better. Uh, let's add some padding to it, like 10. What else does it have? It has these round corners. Round corners, but only on the top. So we can do uh, border, top, left radius to 15 and border top right radius as well to 15, save. Okay, so um, I will also move this buttons container inside our camera preview here. Save. And buttons container, I need to align it to the bottom of the screen buttons container, if I do align self flex end, will it move to the bot? No, not align self. Align, not align. Uh, Buttons container. I can simply do here as a life hack, <laughs> not a life hack, just a hack. <laughs> a view with a flex of one will move, will be between everything and will move these icons there. I don't like it, it's not the best one, but I forgot the, the align self version of the vertical stuff. So having this view in between that will take all the available space is gonna move the icons container on the bottom. And what I also want is to remove a padding of this container on the bottom so that the icons can sit flat to the screen. So camera preview padding, uh, it's gonna have padding top and also padding horizontal. Basically everything except the bottom. Now the icons are there. And button container, we can define a width of 100%. Save. Hmm. Don't like this, this part. So we're gonna have to move some things around. Margin top auto. Oh, justify self probably. That's what people are saying. That's what I want you to do with uh, the button container, justify self. Justif no, there is no justify self here. Margin top can work, margin top auto. 
Yes, margin top auto. Um, no, I will move a couple of things around. Um, buttons container. The buttons container, I'll move them outside the camera preview like this and the background color I'm gonna add to the page itself. So now everything is how I expect them to be. And I don't even need the margin top there. I don't need the width 100%. Mm, yeah, and everything else should remain similar. Thank you very much guys for helping me in the chat. Okay, for the icons, um, we are gonna have to install the React Native vector icons in order to have access to a big set of icons. So here it is. Um, yeah, it's called React Native vector icons and it contains more than 3000 icons that you can use. So let's start by installing the plugin in our project, npm install react native vector icons. Uh, someone told me that from the new version of vector icons, you don't need to import this list of fonts. So let's try that. Not sure. Give me a simple icon. For example, this one. I'm gonna open React or vector icons directory. And this is a web, but not for Expo, this one. So here I can st start searching an icon. For example, here I need what? Mm, camera, right? Camera. where from oh this one to yeah that's what i wanted the ios camera reverse okay and it's from ionicons okay let's do that uh one more step if you are uh, working on a mac os system you also need to do npx uh, pod install. This will install the native dependencies. Need to install the following packages. Pod install. Where it went because I had it. Okay, never mind. Installing and yeah, this is gonna install the React Native Vector icons in your iOS project. Uh, pod installation complete. Okay, perfect. Now Let's scroll here and let's do import Ionicons, Ionicons from vector icons slash Ionicons. So here let's do like this. The name is gonna be where? Camera reverse, this one. Unrecognized font family Ionicons. Uh, let's try to run again the project on uh, our npm run iOS to make sure that it includes the new dependency. And if it doesn't work, we're gonna have to make one more extra step. I'm trying to see if it's actually not necessary that, that step. 
do you recommend learn first uh, Node before React Native as a front-end developer? If you want to be a front-end developer, no, like you don't need Node.js. Uh, however, you need JavaScript. So learn, first of all, JavaScript and then React Native. Let's say hydrated. Drink your water. No, actually I see the same error, which means um, that someone just lied to me and we need to take this extra step. So what we have to do is go back to our React Native vector icons here. And if we scroll down a bit uh, for the here, you should see list of all available fonts, copy paste in info.plist. So let's copy this one. Let's open our iOS directory here, iOS. Can you see? I hope so. Uh, the name of our project, video call. In here, there is the info file. Let's open this info file, scroll down where you see the closing tag of dictionary, the dict. So let's add a couple of lines before it and let's paste the array. Also make sure to, yeah. So the, here should be the key UI up fonts, all the array of keys and then closing tag of dictionary. Let's save uh, and let's run again the application and then run iOS. For Android, for Android, uh, for Android, option with gr Gradle recommended. Yes, let's copy this uh, line and we need to add it to Android app build dot Gradle. Android folder, application, not this build dot Gradle, but app, then build dot Gradle. And let's scroll down, down here. And as the last line, we can add apply from React Native Vector icons fonts. And that's it. Uh, at the end of the video, I'm gonna try to run it on Android, but I can do it right now as well. NPM run Android to see if uh, they work. So here on iOS, they work. Like it's super, super small, the, the icon, but it works. So I'm gonna go back in our uh, calling screen and I'm gonna say size should be 30. Yep, probably like this. And the color uh, and color should be white, like this. Yes. Now let's um, add them inside the view because we need that circle as a button. So to style them like this, I'm gonna add them inside the view. This icon, come on. And this uh, view is gonna contain style, styles dot um, icon button, icon button. Uh, yeah, probably. So let's style them here, icon button. First of all, it should have a background color uh, similar to this one, but I don't know a bit lighter, a bit lighter. So color picker. Like this probably. Save. Okay. Um, it should have a padding of 10 and it should have a border radius of, I don't know, let's give it a lot because we just need it to be round, like this. Um, the Android application ran, but gave me an error. So let me try to restart it. And if I take this container and add more icons, for example, four, save, they will be stacked um, from new line, each of them. So to fix that, our buttons container 
buttons container should have a flex direction row to display all of them in the same row. Save, perfect. And on Android, it works as well. I just ran them and I see the icons, which means that we uh, successfully uh, linked the React Native Vector icons to our Android project. So I'm gonna close this um, emulator for now and keep working for one iOS. Another thing that the buttons container need is the justify content. Uh, in order to, to spread the items uh, apart, like not to put all of them at the beginning, but to do a space between, for example. And this way, they're all gonna be spread apart like this. And I think they should be a little bit bigger, right? Padding, I don't know, 15 or something, yeah. And the padding of a, of a container as well, 20. Yeah, probably this, this is better. Um, oh my God, I see here a nice comment uh, from one of the channel members. So Sergey uh, is saying, hello everyone. I studied React uh, for over a year. Started studying mobile development with Vadim. I finally got my first offer. Thanks, uh, Vadim, you are the best. Everything you do makes you better. Oh my God, that, these messages like makes, makes it everything, um, everything that I'm doing here on the channel and all the effort that I'm putting in uh, building all these projects and doing everything uh, on the channel like Everything now makes sense. So congrats. Thank you very much for your message. And I wish you good luck with your first job or first gig. If you want to give some more details for other people, uh, that's gonna be uh, nice. All right, so back to our project. Let, let's keep going because people ne need to get jobs and offers. Hmm. Let's try to find uh, other icons that we will need there just to make it look better. So we need there what, a camera, 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 camera. I need it from somewhere that has both a camera and a camera crossed, camera of this one. Uh, camera and camera off from material community icons. Okay, let's do that. So from, I'm gonna copy this one. From material, I'm gonna call material icons and it's gonna material community icons. Uh, the second one here, let's replace it. Hey, Sergey, thank you very much for your donation. Oh my God, thank you, thank you. All right, so material community icons, what do we have here, camera off? Yes, is this one. Uh, mic, microphone off or something like this. Let's just give it a try like this. Mic off. No, microphone off. Yes, nailed it. And last one is the red one with the, um, how's it called? I don't know, call. Oh, phone hang up like this. Also from material community icons, I love it. Material community icons. The name is phone hang up. And here I will add some more styles to this button because it needs a, to, we need to override the background color. So put the styles inside an array and the second, um, the second object in this array is gonna be the style that we want to override. So background color, let's do red like this. And now 
it looks pretty similar. Probably the red is not perfect, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm not gonna stop for this one. Okay, um, what else? The thing is that I would like everything to to go like below the notch, you know, in order not to have this white uh, on the top and on the bottom. To do that, um, we need to go back in our uh, app.js and here we have this safe area view. This safe area view is the one that makes sure that our content inside does not go under the notch. So we would have to delete the safe area view if I save. Now everything goes below and above the notch, which uh, is okay on this screen, but if I do it on the context screen, now our search bar is under the notch. So what I will do, no, go back in the context screen. Basically, this is gonna be fixed later in the video with the navigation, so don't worry about this. Let's keep going. So call, here we have it. All right, perfect. Um, yeah, I think we have everything from this screen. I don't know, we can increase the padding on the bottom there for the buttons container. So we have padding and we will do padding bottom uh, 40 to have it more like this. Yeah, looks pretty good, looks pretty good. I'm interested in your course, I will buy uh, ASAP. Thank you very much. I'm still I'm still working on it. It's it's quite a lot of work there, and I hope to to be done by the end of the year with a course. And in the beginning of the next year, I'm gonna open it to the public, so you're gonna be able to to join it. But yeah, everyone who is uh, interested in joining the full stack mobile developer developer course, which is coming in the beginning of the next year and the course is gonna cover, uh, it's gonna be the similar format that you see here on YouTube, but it's gonna cover 10 more, 10 X more content and more systems and features in, um, in by building two applications there. So one of the application is the Duolingo clone, which will cover the React Native basics and there, I'm gonna go through all the details of the fundamentals of React Native before jumping into uh, these big projects. Um, yeah, and that's gonna be a best way for any beginners to get started. And then the second project is gonna be an intermediate to advanced course uh, where we will build an Instagram clone with, with a lot of features there, like the following system, the animations, like stories, the liking system, notification, push notification, building, publishing, testing, um, CI CD to automatically build your application and so on. So if you want to learn all of this, make sure to uh, join the wait list by going to academy.notjust.dev. Join the wait list. And after that, I'm gonna um, update you with when it comes, when it's available. Uh, question, how difficult would it be to implement this in the Signal clone? It would be cool for this type of new features to be implemented in that app to make it even more functional. Uh, yes, it's possible. Like everything that I'm doing here, you can do in the Signal clone. So basically you define all these new screens for the calling features. And in the next video, you're gonna learn how to implement the actual calling functionality. So yeah, I encourage you to take this one and implement it in one of the application that you already have. I decided to do it as a separate project so that everyone will be able to follow along even though we didn't follow other um, clones and projects from the channel. All right, so let's move on. So what do we have here? We are done with this screen, right? As I said, yeah, most probably yes. So let's go to the next one. It's the incoming call screen. 
incoming call screen. It's kind of the same. It's kind of the same here on the bottom. The, the buttons are different, but everything else should be the same. So for the incoming call, uh, the easiest way to go about it is to duplicate this one, shall we? Or it's gonna be a lot. No, let's let's start it from scratch. So in the screens, let's go new folder. It's gonna be incoming call screen. Incoming call screen. Here, let's add the index.js, index.js, and let's do React Native functional export. Let's rename it to incoming call screen. Let's do save to fix all the issues. Here in the text, I'm gonna do incoming call, save. Now, uh, back in our app.js, let's import the incoming call screen from incoming call screen. Let's copy the name here and let's render it instead of the calling. Okay, I see it, it's somewhere there. Uh, which means that we can close our application and go here. I'm gonna try to bring some some of the styles from here. For example, for example, these two for the name and the phone number, they are similar there as well. So like this. Let's define the styles um, by importing the style sheet and const styles equal stylesheet.create. Now I'm gonna bring in the name and phone number styles from here, from calling screen to our screen here, save. Okay, there, there, uh, the only difference is the, I like this background image. I think it's from iOS, right? Shall we add it as a background image there? Uh, iOS background image. Uh, something like this. Yeah, let's let's work with this one. So save as image. Okay, I'm gonna bring it in our, um, let me close everything. In our assets, I'm gonna create a new folder images and I'm gonna bring this image here. Let me rename it to, no, not delete, rename. iOS, background and also um, in order to simplify your work workflow I'm gonna copy it and add it to the asset bundle there so just not to forget that but yeah so let's import that um, that image so import background from from uh, let's move a little bit here, then assets, images, and what's it, the name, iOS, BG, and also make sure to add the PNG at the end. Okay, we have a background. So I'm gonna, um, you can start with an image. So to render it as an image here, image, uh, the source is gonna be background, save, image source background, and style, styles dot image or background. Let's add a weave 100%. Mm. 
source bg styles bg background color red what's happening here uh, view styles let's add styles dot uh, root and in the root we have yeah height 100 percent here Hmm, what's going on? Red. No, something is not working. Function FB reload. All right, let's try to rerun our application. Fail to launch emulator. Oh, no, I don't need it on Android. Come on. I need it on iOS. Why not image background, bro? Yeah, I want to get there. I want to get there. I want to show it with an image and I'll explain it. Just not to confuse everyone. Uh, what wrong am I doing here? debugger what okay let's try to restart the the development server and let's give it a go again could you do a booking up like booksy or you have it already uh we have done airbnb clone Okay, so here is the image. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, now let's clean the root doesn't need a background red. The, here I think it doesn't need a height and a width. No, it needs. The background needs to be full width and height. And one more thing, uh, the image needs a cover mode or a resize mode, resize mode as cover in order to cover all the area. Okay, so the thing is that now our our text is not visible because they are below our image. So if I do hide here 50, the text, and if I do here background color red, for example, you will see the text here. The thing is that we need the text to be on top of this background image. So to fix that, uh, you could play around with some uh, absolute positions, but React Native has a cool component called image background. And image background uh, has the same uh, properties as the image itself. However, for the image background, you can add uh, components inside it. And the components inside it are gonna be rendered on top of the image background. Yeah, like this. You cannot do this with an image. It's gonna give you an error. So I see already the um, text on top, right? So for the height, 100%. Oh, okay. Or is it better to play with flex one? Yeah, let's leave it like this. Background color red for the root. We don't need that. Uh, okay, so image background, background here. Uh, we will need to uh, say that we want our items align items center like this. And we want a uh, name let's add some padding as well padding 10 and our name has margin top 50 is it being applied yeah margin top 50 i don't know 100 yeah probably this looks better all right so here is our screen now what we need to do is to display these icons here on the bottom 
My problem is there is no owner dashboard for Airbnb application. Could you do one for smaller businesses and not property? So for barbers and other services. That's a good idea, like, like a booking service for... Yeah, that's, that's an interesting idea. We, we can think about that. Okay, so what do we have? We need the, the buttons themselves. So remind me, message, decline, accept. Uh, okay. It's also gonna be inside the image background. But basically we don't need the root here because our image background is gonna be the root. So if I remove it, we are good to go. Perfect. Now here, we will have we will have either two rows or two columns, like a basically a grid tube for two. So let's start with the rows view. The first row will contain two two buttons here. Remind me and message. So it's a view with an icon and then a text. I'm gonna add the icon in a moment, remind me. And let's do another view here for what? Message. Message, message. Remind me, let's bring the icon. Uh, clock, I don't know. How is it called? Alarm clock. Alarm. Oh, here. Material community icons. No, let's go for Ionicons. <clears throat> so let's import from And for the remind me, it's gonna be a name alarm color white and size, I don't know, 20. Probably more, 30. Yes, that's better. We're gonna style it in a moment. Now let's bring all of them a message, message. Nothing in Unicons. In typo, let's do in typo. Okay, and the name is message. Yep. All right, and we need one more. So this, okay. We need one more row of this. View uh, like this. And here Vikings is decline and accept the text. Let's de decline and accept. Okay, decline X. Oh, this one and Tick. I don't know. Okay, let's import this one. And for the decline, it's gonna be X. Do you think it's V for the other one? No, it's not. Accept mm, the, I don't know how to, to call it. 
how to search for it. Check, yes, check. Why I wanted to write the tick. Yeah, check. From here, perfect. Thank you very much. Check. Checkmate. Okay, now uh, let's try to style them. So basically, styles. This one is going to be style.row. We want to styles. We want to display them in the same row. Okay. Uh, the other ones style dot. Uh, icons container for this one as well. Uh, da -da -da, the text lot of styles here so the text is going to be icon text and here icon container for the text okay let's start by styling these ones so we have row we have icon container and we have icon text. Let's start with a row because this one is simple. So uh, justify content row will flex direction, I wanted to say. Okay. Hey, Xdreamland just became a channel member. Thank you very much. Thank you. And welcome to being a Node.js developer member on YouTube here. <laughs> Daniel, hello, thank you very much for being here. If you will stick around the live streams for a long period of time, there is a chance that you'll become a developer soon. Uh, what else? I want to justify content space between and I want the row to have a width of 100%. Something like this, no space between, but let's do space around. Space around. Okay, like this. Remind me. All right, and align items center. No, this is already not for the row. I want to align the items inside the icon container. So here, align items center, like this. The icon text uh, should be color white. Icon text, nothing changed. text style, not styles. Make sure not to make this mistake. Style, save. Okay. For the text, I can text, I can do margin top 10 to add some space around them. Yeah, like that. So let's do the same for our buttons here. You know what? They should also be icons container. Icons container. This one icons container. Mm -hmm. Okay. Icons container. Let's do margin vertical 20. 
Okay, and in for these buttons, we need to put the icons inside another view with these uh, round corners and with red background and blue in that case. So for the decline here, let's put the icon inside another view. Only the icon should be there here. Styles. Uh, icon button container. So basically it's not just an icon, it's an icon button container. And let's do the same for the second one. Okay. Icon button container should be, um, let's start with a background color red. Perfect. Should have padding 20 and border radius, border radius uh, 50. Like this. Okay. Uh, the icons should be bigger there. Right? To change the icon size, we can go here. What? 50. Yeah, 50, but decrease the padding. So padding to 15. Yeah, or even 20 was okay. Okay, okay. Uh, and also let's add some margins to it. Margin 10. Is it too big? No, I think it's okay. And for the text, let's copy the style and give to the accept icon text and to the decline. Oh my God, it's so much styles in JSX here. Only for a couple of buttons. Uh, for this row, in order to align them on the bottom, Let's add an inline style here as margin top auto. And this will move everything down like this. Uh, the background of the accept button should be changed as well. So accept, accept, decline, accept here. Okay, let's add one more style for the background color blue. Uh, light blue, light blue. Oh no, not that, not that, not that. Can I find it myself? Something like this. Yes, it's almost identical. You see the eye of an eagle. How do you learn new technologies? You follow tutorials or just read documentation and Google it? Uh, if you're asking me, uh, yeah, nowadays I'm mostly learning from documentations, um, especially when you're working with well-documented technologies. That, that's, yeah. But in, in the beginning, like when I started out, I was following tutorials as everyone does. Because when you just are getting started, all the documentation is kind of difficult and doesn't make a lot of sense for, for newbies. So stick to the video content if it works for you. And um, the icon's too big. The icons are too big. Oh no, what happened? Okay, we're back. Vikings are too big. Um, do you think so? I think the padding is too big. So 10. And probably not 50, but 40. 40 and here 40. And increase the padding again. 15. Yeah, probably this is better. 
Okay. Does it look good? I think it does. Uh, the text there is different, so the text is not ringing, but what's up video? And yeah, everything else is perfect like this. You know what, before moving forward, let's also just define the, um, the click callback for these buttons. Because right now, if we click, nothing happens. But later on in the next video, we will have to implement the click handlers. So let's do them now. And uh, so yeah, it's gonna be ready by the next by the next time. In order to manage click um, click events like on press, uh, there is a component called pressable in React Native. So let's grab the pressable and let's which are our buttons? I think we will need the decline. So this is the decline. Let me. Add some comments here. Decline button. This is accept button. So for the decline button, let's um, replace the view that contains uh, everything, including the decline text and the icon. Let's replace this view with a pressable. Uh, the pressable has similar properties as a view. So if you just replace it and save, nothing is gonna um, uh, break because they are interchangeable. However, the pressable has one more extra property. I mean, it has a lot of them, but one that we need today is on press event. So one press is gonna be a function that we def define in a moment on decline, let's say. We're gonna define it uh, shortly, but let's do the same for the accept. So pressable on press on accept. On press on accept. Now let's scroll down and before returning, let's define these two functions that we used. On decline, decline is gonna be a arrow function. And here let's simply console warn uh, on the decline. I'm using console warn just in order for you to be able to see it on the screen. Here, I forgot the equal sign. And let's do const on accept the similar way. Now we don't have any functionality, but let's just make sure that it's there and we can add functionality later. Accept, save. So if I press now on the decline, I see the console warn here on decline. And if I press on the accept, I see on accept. And you don't have to press specifically on this icon. You can press on the decline text uh, because we encapsulated in the pressable both the icon and the text. So that's why it works like this. All right. Uh, So this screen, I think it's done. You could uh, import alert alert and do alert.test to have more visual of it. Yeah, you can do that as well, but you have to import things and like, I, I, it's a lot of work just to show that it's working. You can do alert alert uh, on, on decline press or yeah. This is first title and then decline pressed. And when you press on the decline, it's gonna show you this alert. But we don't need it at the moment. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, the only thing is that this console warn uh, will not show in production. They are showing only in development mode. However, the alert is shown in production as well. That's something to keep in mind. All right, guys. So, um, 
Should we raise it a bit to add some padding on the bottom? Not to touch the, so BG, 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 padding bottom uh, 30 or even 50. And this is gonna be raised a bit, yeah. Now it's better. And what else? The next screen. The next screen is uh, where I have a very fat uh, face. So <laughs> it's the screen for the, not the incoming call, but the call itself, the call screen. Here we will uh, also display the same bottom buttons as we already saw. And then our camera and also the camera of the person who, are, who we are talking with. So this screen is quite simple. And I think for this screen, oh, we can just, let me try to uh, calling screen. I think it's very similar to this calling screen because it has, it has these buttons, it has the text and only the, the yeah, like one more camera here should be visible. Hmm. Um, however, instead of me copy pasting all of this screen just because it shares these buttons here, I would better extract these buttons to a reusable component that we can reuse in the both screens. Because yeah, as you can see, mostly only these buttons are shared shared among between these two screens. So let's uh, extract from the calling screen this button container, like everything here, right? So let's go ahead in components and you find a new folder called um, call action, action box, call action box. Here you take the actions, does it make sense? Probably. And a new file index just there, React Native Functional Export, call action box, box, save. And from the calling screen, let's copy this view. Make sure you have to take it from here up until this view. So let's take everything and let's put it here instead inside the return statement. So inside the return statement, we put everything, save. Now let's define the style sheet. Const styles equal stylesheet.create. And let's bring from the calling screen the styles for this. So it's these two styles, buttons container and icon button. Uh, we're gonna bring them here. And we also need to bring the imports of our icons. So if I scroll to the top, I see these two icons here lonely. So let's grab them from here and put them in our call action box, save. Now in our calling screen, let's import our newly created component that is called call action box. And it automatically filled the path to that component. And here let's do call action box, just render them, save. And we are back to where we started, but our calling screen became much smaller, like only what, 16 lines of code or less than 50 in total with the styles. And the good thing about this is that we can reuse this call action box for our new screen um, that we will define here. So let's start by defining the new screen. Uh, new folder is called call screen, call screen, new file index.js 
React Native Functional Export, call screen, save. Here, let's do call screen. And in app.js, let's import the call screen. We have calling and call screen. Yeah, they're different. Call screen and it's there. What we can do in this call screen where is to render the call action box right away because we will need it, but make sure to import it. Import call action box, save, and it's there. Uh, how did we make it? Yeah, we made that camera preview. Should we grab, grab the camera preview from here? Yeah, we actually can. So let's grab the camera preview instead of a text. We don't need the text. And let's also define the styles because it doesn't have them. So const styles equal style sheet dot create. And yeah, let's import the style sheet as well from React Native. And we need the styles for the camera preview. What do we have in the calling screen? Camera preview flex one, align. Yeah, probably this is gonna be okay for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this view needs a style for the whole page. So styles, but if I just remove it, yes, I didn't need it at all because yeah, we need this view camera preview, which can have a background color red. Hmm. Yeah, again, we are back to, to that thing. But it's okay, like we, hmm, we can, we, we, it depends very much on how we will implement the, um, the camera preview itself. So here, let's do styles.page, page, page. and the page will have flex one and background color red, but not red, but let's do it with this purple. Save. Okay, okay, okay. Um, what else? We need another camera on top of this page. Uh, so let's add another one and another one. And another one. Oh, come on. Um, and one closing like this view. You know what? Um, camera preview. This is going to be our camera preview. Yeah, because right now our page displays the background color of this purple and the camera preview is going to be this small uh, video camera that will display our video. So, um, Let's do it like this. Let's start with simply with a hundred height, a hundred, just to see it on the screen and with a background color of, I don't know, red. Unterminated regular expression. Oh, here. Huh, okay. And um, 
call to action. Should we try to add uh, to the buttons container here? Margin top auto. Yes, and this will fix this one. Camera preview. Uh, camera preview. I think for this camera preview, we can work with a position absolute uh, because it should be it should be somehow on top. And also, like if I remember correctly from our application, you are able to move it from one place to another. We're not gonna implement that, but if you are able to move it without affecting our, our containers positions, then we need to work with a position absolute. So we want to align it to the right. So I'm gonna say right 10, not to be very close. And top uh, 100, like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's better. And yeah, right now let's just do increase a bit the height and do some uh, border radius of 10. Then we are good. Should I add another color? instead of red. Okay, so here we have it. Here we have it. Right now it doesn't look very exciting, uh, but yeah, because I don't want to implement right now the camera, everything related to the camera and the video itself is coming from the Vox implant SDK. And we're gonna see how to implement that in the next video, next Friday. Right, zero top 10. Mm, I, I, I wanted to adjust it here to make it look like this. What else? What else? Um, our call action buttons, they do not have these um, pressable events that we will need in the next video. So let's uh, spend a little bit more time today in order to save us time in the next video because in the next video is gonna be pretty technical, like with connecting everything with a video and so on. So let's take this pressable and replace what? Everything with a pressable. All these views are pressables. Now, uh, they have a on press. The first one is on a reverse camera, this one on press is gonna go call on toggle camera, on press, on toggle microphone, and this one on press is gonna be on uh, hang up. Okay, so let's define these functions here. Const on reverse camera is gonna be one. Const on toggle camera. Const on toggle camera on toggle microphone and lastly const on hang up these are all the four, four, four functions if I saved yeah they come did it like this um, I can add here for example console warn just for you to see that it's working for example, this one on reverse camera. But I, I would like also to implement some logic for the icons themselves. So depending on the, if a camera is open or not, the icon should, should change. So in this case, it's if a camera is on, it should show a camera off icon. Uh, otherwise, it, sh it should show a camera icon. So to handle this, uh, changes, 
we will need a state variable. For that, let's import use state hook and on top add the, the const for this state. So um, is camera on set is camera on. This is going to be initially true. When we press on this toggle camera, we want to reverse. If it's true, we want to make it false. If it's false, we want to make it true. For that reason, let's do set is camera on with the inverted value of is camera one. So if initially it was true, we want to set it to false because we invert it. Now, when we try to render the camera, uh, I'm gonna add it inside the curly brackets and the name of the icon will depend on the is camera on value. Is camera on here is camera on. So if camera is on, we want to display camera off. Otherwise we want to display camera save. If I press, I see a different icon. If I press again, I see a different icon. The same thing should happen with a microphone. So let's do is mic on set is mic on initially is true. Uh, toggle microphone set is mic on with a inverted value of is mic on. Now, whenever we try to render the, um, the icon, we will add the curly brackets because we need an exp JavaScript expression here. So is mic on, we will render microphone off. Otherwise, we will render just microphone save. If I press, I see. Now I can toggle the, the state of the camera and the microphone. This right now only changes the, um, the icon that we display. But uh, yeah, in the next video, we're going to implement the functionality of these two buttons. All right, can we talk about the pricing for Vox Implied today? Or do you want to do that next week? Um, I think I think we're gonna talk about the pricing of Vox Implant next week. Uh, all right. So what else I wanted to do today? This screen is done. The last step I wanted to do today is to implement the navigation. The last step is to implement the navigation in order to be able to navigate from one screen to another. Yes, uh, someone mentioned that uh, it is a good practice to use functional updates to make sure to use correct current value when the next state is dependent on the previous state. That's actually true. Mm. So whenever your state that you want to update depends on the existing state. Yeah, the, the thing is that this, this is quite advanced and I find it a little bit difficult to explain, but I'm going to try. So for example, what do you think will happen if I do it like this? Set is camera one to the inverted value and then set is camera one to the inverted value. If you think about it, you switch it, you reverse it one time and you reverse it back the second time. So basically nothing should happen. I should press on the button, it should flip flip and it should remain in the initial state, right? If I press on the toggle camera, actually here it works. Hmm. Yeah, in some other cases it's not working because our new state depends on the old state. So to make it uh, to fix this issue when uh, in some cases our state does not update correctly because it depends on the previous one, what we can do is instead of providing here a new value, we provide a function, a function that will receive current value and that will return the uh, updated state based on the current value. 
So what we want to do here is to revert the current value. So right now it works back, uh, but it uh, current value, the same as current value. Yeah, this is actually a better way to do it because you are not depending on the state variable from your component. You are rather sending a function or, and telling React how the existing value that is there should be updated. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, Xdreamland, thank you very much. You're right, it's a bit challenging to, to, to describe, but yeah, this is a, a better way to update an existing state variable. Okay, I remember I, I was having these issues uh, back in the days in one of the clones. For example, whenever I was receiving new messages, when I was subscribing to some uh, GraphQL, to a GraphQL subscription, for example, you subscribe to um, the new message update in GraphQL. So whenever a new message in the chat room appears, you will receive this update. And I was trying to append the message to the existing messages in the state. And in that case, it was not working. And the fix was the current one because I was updating the existing messages in the state based on the, based on my state value instead of passing uh, an update function. So in some edge case situations, like it's good to know this. Okay, uh, what I wanted to say is that we can close everything and we can start working on our navigation. But before that, I'm gonna go somewhere very important for less than one minute and I'm gonna be back. So guys, stay here and we are going to implement navigation in our application today. All right, guys, I'm back and, oh, you didn't leave. Actually, more people joined while I was away. So should I go or stay? Should we continue? All right, so uh, Stack Navigator, let's see. Why you are not using simple Next.js? Uh, because Next.js is for web, but now we are building a mobile application. So that's why we are using React Native. Uh, guys, where I can get free UI application design so that I can practice. I'd suggest you to try to uh, clone the application that you love. Anything from your phone, try to clone it. Start from the main features and then work your way up to implement even more features and always challenge yourself to, to implement more and more because yeah, like when the application grows, then you will start uh, getting through some challenges that usually you don't see in smaller applications. So, or uh, on Dribble, yeah, as well. Okay, so navigation, let's start with this one. Navigation, the fun uh, starts here. So let's go to React navigation. 
uh, React Navigation. There is a new version, version six, but I didn't uh, look into a lot. So let's start uh, to install it together and configure all our screens and the navigation between screens together. So in the getting started guide, let's have a look. Prerequisites, okay, React Native. Minimum requirements, React Native version 63. In our case, React Native version, we can look in the package.json React Native 066, that's good. Uh, install the required packages in your React Native application. Okay, let's start with um, install React Navigation Native. This is the first one. Then we're gonna need some dependencies, but not in the Expo Manage project, but in the bare React Native project. Because React Navigation depends on these two libraries, React Native Screens and React Native Safe Area Context. So let's install this too. After our React Navigation is installed, let's do npm install these two libraries. Version 6 is kind of the same, I have implemented. Yes, React Navigation is already a very mature uh, library. That's why the new version does not have a lot of breaking changes. Like they, they're improving the performance, they're improving some of the development experience, uh, fixing some bugs and so on. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure they, they updated a lot of things behind the scenes. So that's, that's what, I, I, that's why I said like I didn't look into that and I really want to to get into that to see what's updated, but yeah. So we install the screens. Uh, two, 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 two. We don't need to link, we need to install the pods. So let's do npx pod install iOS. Okay. And what else? Um, React Native package, React Native screens package requires one additional configuration step to properly work on Android devices. So we need to edit the main activity Java file, which is located there, and add the following code to the body of the main activity. Okay, let's copy this code and go to the main activity in Android folder. So let's open Android. You can see it here. Application, source, main, Java, Java com video call and then here main activity. It's main activity, not main application, right? Yes, it's main activity. And inside here, we will paste our on create method inside, yes. And let's also import the Android OS bundle at the top here. So import this uh, Android OS bundle and add this um, on create function. And for Android, we should be good to go. This change is required to avoid crashes related to the view state. Okay, now we need to wrap, yeah, okay, that's it. Now, uh, what do we need to do? The next step is to wrap our whole application with um, uh, navigation container. So let's import navigation container from React navigation, React navigation, oh, come on, I forgot, React navigation native should be, right? Oh, it's with, yeah, navigation container from React navigation native. And now let's wrap, let's wrap the, our call screen here, navigation container. I will wrap it with the call screen there output. Perfect. 
Um, before continuing, you know what? Uh, I usually like to keep everything related to the navigation in a separate file, not in the app.js. It's going to be easier to put it here, but let's not be lazy and let's, uh, in the source, create a new folder called navigation and add a file index.js. Here, React Native Functional Export. Uh, I'm gonna get this navigation container. Yeah, basically, instead of a view, I'm gonna do navigation container, which is automatically imported from React Navigation Native. And inside this navigation container, later we're gonna add the, um, the navigators themselves, but now let's simply add the call screen call screen and let's import import call screen from screens save we don't need the view and the text there save now in our application i'm gonna remove a navigation container and here i'm gonna do navigation and the navigation we will import navigation from source navigation. So this way, again, we keep our application very um, clean. We have navigation here. And I'm gonna copy this import of the screens from here into our navigator, navigation. So call screen here. Um, let's update the relative path. So instead of source, we have this. Oh, come on, come on, no, no, no. Like this and like this. Yeah, save none of this file exists. Navigation source screens. Um, screens up navigation, source, navigation, index. Let's do, let's rename it, but it's not, the problem is not in this one. Probably it needed just a refresh. Hello, hello. Are you using AWS for the backend? Uh, no, for, for the backend, we're gonna use the Vox Implant SDK and that's gonna be in the next video. Uh, let's restart our server because it crashed. And let's run our application again, npx pod install iOS. Don't we need to put it in size text? Yes, we're gonna get there with this text. Right now, it's just gonna simply render one screen. After that, we're gonna implement the logic with a stack uh, with specific navigators. Come on. Oh, I need to run npm run iOS. I didn't modify my main activity and my navigation worked fine. As you can see in the documentation, we are not saying that it's gonna, uh, it's not gonna work, but um, this change is required to avoid crashes related to the view state being not persisted consistently across activity restarts. So it's gonna work, but in, in some cases uh, it's gonna crash when you uh, restart your application. So I would, I would encourage you to add these three lines. It's not a lot, but you are sure that you follow the documentation and it's not crashing all of a sudden and you don't know why and you forgot that you didn't Im implement that, th those lines. 
Uh, Igor Caesar Code. Hello, I'm following your tutorial from Brazil. I really like your way of explaining. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. So we are back to normal. Everything works as it was working before. We added the navigation container. This is just the first step uh, when it comes to navigation. We add the navigation, the React Native, React Navigation Native with a navigation container for all the uh, global navigation management, basically. But now we need to install some kind of navigators. And there are a couple of them. For example, the best way to explain them, I think, was the, um, this way. So here on the bottom, you see an example of a tab navigator because it has multiple tabs. Very similar on the top, top tabs navigator. Uh, the one that contains the back button is a stack navigator. And how stack navigator works is whenever you navigate to a new screen, it will simply put the new screen on top of a previous one. That's why you have this back button. When you press the back button, it will just pop the, the, the screen that is on top of your stack. Behind the scenes, it works as a stack. Like you put on top and you take, when you go back, you take the, the last added screen. So in our case, that's actually what we will need. We will need a stack navigator. So let's go ahead and search for the stack navigator. Where is it? Native stack navigator. Installation. Uh, let's start by installing React Navigation native stack. Native stack. Why you're not using Expo today? We're not using Expo today because uh, Vox implant depends. Uh, the SDK that we're gonna use for the calling functionalities, uh, they depend on some uh, native dependencies. So I didn't try to use it with Expo, but most probably it's not gonna work. But that's a good question if it works with Expo. I'm, I'm, I tested it with React Native and it works, React Native CLI. So we added this stack navigator. Now the next step is to uh, import the function that helps us create the stack navigator. So we are gonna import it from React Native stack and the function is called create native stack navigator. I'm not thinking, was it native stack or just stack? Is there a difference between native stack and stack? One thing to keep in mind is that while native stack offers native performance and exposes native features such as large title on iOS, it may not be as customizable as React Navigation Stack, depending on your needs. So if you need more customization than what's possible in this navigator, consider using Stack. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because so far I was only using the Stack Navigator, but here is Native Stack, which is saying that gives native performance. Let's try to use it because if we, if we go into some limitation of customization that they are saying, we will be able to replace it with a React Navigation stack easily. So um, first of all, let's define our stack with create navi stack navigator. And now uh, inside our navigation container, let's render our stack dot navigator. Yeah, by the way, uh, in the version six, if someone said that they didn't add anything, they added this stack.group, which you can use to apply uh, some styles to the same group. I mean options, not styles. So stack navigator. Inside the stack navigator here, we need to render all the screens that we have, that we need in this navigator. So stack.screen, it needs a name, the name is going to be, let's start with the uh, contacts, contacts, contacts. 
and the component that we that this screen will render is this contacts screen Con contacts screen save and we see our contacts here with a title on the top contacts if you want to uh, hide the, um, the title bar there you can do that with the screen options or options header shown false by doing this we uh, hit the, the header of this text screen but I think we I like it and I will keep it uh, the next text screen let me just copy paste this one four times and it's gonna be the call screen call then we have calling no yeah calling calling and we have uh incoming call screen why do we have three elsewhere calling incoming call perfect like this okay um for example here in the stack navigator There should be default, come on, where default screen, screen name, stack navigator, isn't it? Default screen option, default options, Init initial route name. That's what I was trying to search. Initial route name. If I add it to the call, I want to render this one to see if we need there, the, um, we need to re refresh call. Oh, not here, to the Stack Navigator. Save, refresh, I should see the call. That's what I wanted to see, uh, that for this call and also for calling and also for the incoming call, everything except the contact, we need to hide the screen, the, um, the, the, type, the header. So we could do options, header, show one false and it's gonna disappear from there and we need to add this to all of them but another way to apply some options to multiple screens and this is the first time i'm trying this is using the group component so stack.group like this will contain all these three stacks and it's gonna contain options. Will it work? Will it work? And if I don't have it here, no. But screen options, yes, yeah, screen options works. So um, on the stack.screen, when we want to set the options, we you do that with the options uh, property. On the Stack Navigator, if you want to define some options for all the screens there, we use screen options, for example. And apparently for the stack.group, it's as well screen.option. And by doing this, we applied the header shown false to all of these three elements. Okay, screen options, yes, thank you. Uh, so I can remove this initial screen route name because I wanted just to see how it looks there. And if I refresh, I see them here. Okay, back in our screens, uh, contact screen, for the page I want to say that the background color should be white and flex one to take the whole space yes like this okay so whenever we press on one contact i want to call him so this text um 
this text we will put it inside the pressable but yeah let's put it inside the pressable the text itself and on press is gonna be uh, a function that's gonna call the function named call <laughs> call user call come on call user and the user is gonna be the item call user item so let's define the function here const call user we're gonna receive a user that we want to call and what do we want to do here we will need to navigate first of all let's do console console warn to see that we user call if i press i see user call perfect now from here we need to navigate to the calling screen how do we do that we do that first of all we need access to the navigation um, object to get access to the navigation object we can uh, use a hook called use navigation from react native navigation core and on the top of our component here we get the navigation using this use navigation boom we have access now with this navigation object we can do navigation dot navigate and where do we want to navigate a name of a screen a name of a screen uh calling we want to go there calling so if i press calling i go here uh now how do i go back calling and here is who we are calling okay before going to this screen and implementing the next features i want to be able to send the user who are calling to that screen so to send data when we navigate we can pass here uh, parameters so we want to send the user basically user is user but because they have the same key and value i'm gonna do it simply like this so we are sending the user there all right that's good that's the first step now let's open our calling screen and here first of all i want to display who we are calling no first of all i want to do something else i want to be able to go back from this screen so if you saw calling there is this back button back back icon on the top so let's add it and implement the functionality when we press it to go back but actually we don't need that button because whenever i I, I uh, press on the hang up, I should go back. But let's, yeah, let's uh, do it with an icon instead. Okay, so first of all, let's find an icon. Back, 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 back. This one from Unicorns. And I'm gonna put it camera preview somewhere here. So Unicorns name uh, color white size 20 like this. Let's import Unicorns. from react native vector icon slash unicorns and let's press again dismiss what failed prop type invalid prop size oh size 20. okay it should be somewhere there uh the only thing is that we need to add it inside the pressable pressable because we need to get the press events 
So on press, go back and style style dot back button. Let's quickly first of all, while we're here, implement go back because it will crash if we don't have it. And the back button style. Let's go on that screen to see it. Uh, and I'm gonna say that the style is, first of all, it should be position absolute, and it should be top, uh, I don't know, 50, and uh, left 10, probably 100, no, 70. Okay, something like this. I will increase the size of it to 30, to 25. Don't like how it looks, 25. Okay, something like this. So, uh, styles are okay. Now, let's implement the go back. How do we go back? Again, we need to import use navigation and to take the navigation object here with the hook navigation. And to go back, simply we do navigation dot go back. So if I press, nothing happens. Is it pop? If I press, Go back. Let me try to console warn just to make sure that it comes here. No, it doesn't, you see? Pressable on press, go back. Background color red. What's happening there? This should be the pressable. Absolute position pressable are not working on press. What do you think? Can it be because it's absolute? Man, I don't see it, but if I do margin top. Yes, it's because of the position absolute. Um, is it a known bug? So React native pressable absolute position. The index. A solution was to change the order of the components. What I originally had, okay. Let, mm, Z index might work. I think that Z, Z index does not work on all the component, all the platforms. So here on iOS it worked. On Android, I want to test it on Android. So NPM run Android. While it runs on Android, yes, this is going back with this animation. Perfect. Now, uh, what I want to do, I will remove a console war here, is to, instead of saying here a hard-coded text, I want to display the name of a specific user that I'm pressing there. So, uh, to get the, as you remember, in our context screen, we send the user when we navigate it. How do we get the user here on this calling screen? We need access to the route. So let's get access to the route using the use route hook. Const route, use route. If you're coming from web development, uh, this route will make sense because, for example, when you open a page of a post, the idea of that post usually is 
inside the route. So you get it from the route. Or if you have some filters, arguments or something like that, they're all passed with the route. In mobile development, this is not very common, but in React Native, because it's closely related to React.js, we are using this route. So uh, let's do const user is equal route dot uh, let's do dot params, params dot user, but I'm putting this question marks because it might be the case, but the user is not in the params. So that's why I added it here. So let's do here user, user dot display name, but how is it called? in our assets, assets, data, contacts, user display name. Save. Okay, calling Logan Paul. You see, now we are sending data here. Perfect. That's good. Will we make back backend? Yes, we are gonna implement the functionality of this application in the next video. So stay tuned. Okay, this is the navigation here. What else? Now, like that's probably it when it comes to navigation. Because, uh, to, 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 let me check if my Android, no, Android didn't run. Make sure you have running or device connected. Let me try to open Android Studio. So yeah, what what I wanted to say is that, um, oh my God, please stop. Let me try to run an AVD, Pixel 4 or 2, which one, which one, which one? Let's try 2. The emulator access was killed by who? Who is killing my processes? The in Z index works on Android. Okay, yeah, just uh, wanted, wanted to make sure that everything works. Come on. ADB devices, there is no devices. Weird, I cannot run the, my Android device. But that's okay. Uh, yeah, what I wanted to say, back in our navigation, we have uh, the incoming call screen and the call screen. The thing is that the navigation to those screens are not dependent are not triggered by the user press events. Uh, they will be triggered by some events that is gonna come from the cloud. So for example, uh, we will subscribe to the incoming call events and whenever an incoming call event is gonna be triggered, then we're gonna trigger, to, then we're gonna navigate to this incoming call. The same thing with the call uh, component. After we accepted the incoming call, we're gonna redirect to this call uh, screen, similar to the calling as well. Uh, yeah, so that's why I'm not gonna implement those, but you saw how we can navigate from one screen to another. We simply take the navigation um, object using the use navigator hook, as we saw here. And after that, we do a navigation.navigate and we uh, to the screen name and also we can pass some data here. And if you want to access the data, you simply take the route and uh, look for that data in the route.params. So that's probably everything that I wanted to do in this, uh, in this tutorial. Um, yeah.
Yes, yes, that's everything that I wanted to cover in the today's stream. So we implemented uh, the contacts, the list of contacts that will display a list of users that we want, we can call. Then we implemented the calling screen, the screen that uh, you see when you are calling someone until they um, respond to your call. After they respond to your call, I mean, they will receive this incoming call screen where they can accept or decline the call. If they accept the call, you both will see the call screen that will display both your video and the other person's video. And you will be able to um, turn off the camera, turn on the camera, uh, the same with the microphone, hang up and so on. We also implemented the navigation to be able to navigate from one screen to another. And uh, in the next video, which is gonna come uh, next week, next week on 12th of November, it's 12th, I guess, at 3 p.m. GMT, we are going to implement all the functionality, all the video calling functionality for this build. So make sure to be here, subscribe to the channel down below, uh, probably there or there. I don't know. And also turn on the notification bell not to miss the, um, the video that is coming next week. And also a lot of videos in future that we have planned in our calendar. So if you have any questions, now is the time. Let's spend a little bit of time talking and then we can call it a day and start the weekend. Before that, I also want to thank you once again, Vox Implant for sponsoring this video and for making it possible uh, to build this application, this uh, video calling application. Uh, today, yeah, you only heard about them, but in the next video, you're gonna see how uh, easy and how powerful Vox Implant SDK is when it comes to uh, building communication applications uh, like this one, like a peer-to-peer -peer video and audio uh, chatting application. So thanks Vox Implant again for sponsoring this video. Can we talk about the pricing? Um, yes, we can talk about the pricing. Uh, I will briefly cover the Vox, Vox, Vox Implant pricing. Uh, and the good thing about um, our use case is that it's almost for free. So they have a lot of uh, features as I described in the beginning of the video. You can implement a way to call from the Vox Implant platform to a phone number. In that case, like you are of course charged because you're calling a phone number. You can call the like two different yeah, phone numbers, but what we are building is a SDK to SDK, basically a peer-to-peer -peer calls where um, the Vox Implant cloud provider will only manage the users. And whenever you're trying to call another user, they will redirect the call. And after that, all the video exchange is gonna happen peer to peer. And this is a way to, to make them secure because your data from your application is not going through Vox Implant. It's going directly to, your, um, to the person who you're talking with. So in case you are building these peer-to-peer -peer calls uh, that we are doing in this build, then the price for voice and for video is free. The only thing that you're gonna pay is for monthly active users. However, if you have less than 1,000 monthly active users, uh, it's gonna be free. If you have uh, less than up to 5,000 monthly active users, it's gonna be $100 per month and so on. So yeah, for development and for testing uh, this solution, you're not gonna be charged. So that's why it's free. All right, any other questions? Will this video be available? Yes, of course. All our videos, all our usual videos on the channel are published on the channel afterwards. I did yesterday a stream of me preparing for today's live stream where I played some music and it was kind of a virtual office. I don't know if you saw, let me know in the comments if you saw that one. And if you would like me to do that more often. But that video I didn't publish because 
is not giving any value to you. It was mostly a way and a place to get together, to listen to good music and everyone to code their own things. Do they offer selected features only? I only need messaging maybe. Um, yeah, it depends like what you are implementing. For example, if I am imp implementing only peer-to-peer -peer calling functionality, that's what I'm gonna be charged on. So you are charged on only, you are charged for only the things that you are using. Can you share your play playlist? I saw the video. That playlist is stream beats. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a YouTuber. They decided to create these stream beats, and that are free and not copyright free music to play on your streams. And now he's getting huge, like very huge, with, with his company. So yeah, check it out. Okay. Hello, Vadim, I just came to a stream question. Do you use Redux or any other state management systems? Um, like in this application, you're meaning, you mean, in this application, we're not gonna have any global state management. In your application, I would recommend it like this. If it's a small application and a new application that you are starting from scratch, check out uh, Recoil. This um, is a global state management made specifically for React and React Native, and it works very, very well, and it's much easier to learn uh, compared to Redux. However, yeah, if you're working in a big project, and specifically if it's a legacy project that was started before, and they're already using Redux, then you have to learn it. Great stream, thank you very much. I also enjoyed it, it was very well paced, like we did a lot of things today. Okay. I could not download assets. Yes, um, I will I will update them and you'll be able to download uh, shortly. If not using Vox Implant, can that same application be done using React Native um, Web RTC? Uh, probably yes, uh, but I, I didn't try it out, so if you know what you're doing, <laughs> then definitely it's possible. Are you more focused on mobile development or do you do web development? And uh, that is your favorite favorite framework if you work in web development as well. The last years I mostly been uh, working in mobile development and on this channel we started with mobile development and now I decided to stick with mobile development uh, in order to um, yeah, be focused, be niched and to cover a lot of things so that anytime you think about mobile development with React Native you're gonna think about the not just development, you're gonna come here and you're gonna f find a solution. And we are far from there, there, like I have so many ideas, I have so many plans, we have to cover so many uh, things, features, systems, and so on. So I'm gonna still be focused on mobile development, but I do not exclude that we're gonna cover web development as well. And when it comes to web development, I really like Next.js. It's our platform, not just dev, is on Next.js. I tried uh, before Gatsby. I didn't like that much Gatsby. Um, yeah, that's... But Next.js is perfect, love it. Okay, I wanted to end this stream, but I see a lot of great questions. So let's, let's see. Um, I saw your other videos. I did not notice you use uh, state management. I would appreciate if you make one of it. Okay, maybe we will cover some of it in future videos. Yeah, like, the thing is, we, we cover Recoil in the, um, mm, we, have a, we have a project with Recoil. We, uh, we have a, the UEFA clone, let me find it and give it to you. There, in that video, I focused a lot on the state management with Recoil, so you can check it out there. 
Un momento. How is it called? Oh, this one. Oh. Let's hope that the video is not gonna get demonetized because of <laughs> of that sound. So I wanted to show you this one. It's this one where, 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 where. Come on, video focus. Mm, here, this one. Yo, Euro 2020. I cannot paste it there, but you've got it. Mm -hmm. I'm rooting for Vadim to focus on mobile development because there aren't many mobile developer content creators. Yes, let's go. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's also one of the reasons. Like I strategically picked a niche that is not very, um, field with content online, which is mobile development, specifically with React Native and with AWS Amplify, which are great technologies in my opinion. Would you build a video streaming site using web WebRTC? Maybe, maybe in future. Vadim is my main source of React Native. Yes, let's go. Uh, do you speak Spanish? Uh, un poco. <laughs> no, no, not very much. I'm trying and I need to because I live in Spain, but it's, I don't have time for it, but I really want. Sick tattoo. Thank you. Which one? Hello, how are you? Thank you. I'm good. Uh, just finished a wonderful stream with a lot of great people watching it. All right, guys, so um, let's end it here and I will see you. Don't forget, set up a reminder, set up your calendar. Next week, we continue this build and we take it to the next level. We implement all the features and probably by the end of that video, we are gonna be able to uh, call some of the live viewers to, to test it there. So make sure to be there. Um, by the way, yeah, while you're waiting for the next video, Check out this video or this video or this video or this video. Some of them, they're both amazing and you will learn a lot from there. So thank you very much, guys. Take care, stay hydrated and write clean code. Bye-bye. But now I need to end the stream.